So I'm not going to make anyone fall out of their chair here if I say that I think the film Goodfellas surpasses as a work of art uh, its source material. However, I want to warmly recommend that source material to any fan of Goodfellas or anyone interested in the history of the mob, the Italian-American mafia. Uh, the book is called Wise Guy, and it's the book that allowed Scorsese to see the possibility of making a film in which the lifestyle uh, was the main character, which is a fundamental part of, of what works best about Goodfellas, in, in my opinion. So Nicholas Pileggi, the author, who then collaborated with Scorsese on the script, uh, wrote the book in conjunction with Henry Hill, the real-life mobster played by Ray Liotta in Goodfellas. Um, he interviewed Henry Hill whilst Hill was under witness protection and living under a assumed name. And those interviews are turned into these kind of longish monologues where Henry Hill is recounting the events of his life, or his, his former life. Um, it's not the only person that uh, Pileggi interviews. He also interviews Karen, Hill's wife, and just as they um, narrate the events of Goodfellas, they, they are the sort of principal voices in Pileggi's book. Pileggi also fills in the gaps with political and, and historical context. Uh, it, the book takes place over quite a long timeline, so uh, it's good to kind of get the wider view. Just like there is in the film, there is a, uh, sometimes a tension, there is sometimes something at odds between Henry's version and uh, what's really going on, what's going on behind the uh, behind the masks of his smiling associates and what's going on sort of politically with uh, the FBI cracking down on the mob. It's full of irresistible mob details like uh, gangsters laying handkerchiefs on the bonnets of cars so the dons can sit on them, a gangster from Murder Incorporated taking a special pride in his ability to push an ice pick through someone's ear in the cinema without anybody noticing, uh, the array of hilarious names. There's someone who's called something like Bobby the Dentist because he always manages to <laughs> knock someone's teeth out when he fights them. It's a world of excess, of uh, florid characters, florid dress, bordering on campness. Like all uh, emphatically heterosexual subcultures, the world of uh, these mobsters is sometimes very homoerotic. And for movie buffs, it's a must read uh, to see what details Scorsese keeps. Some of them are extremely granular and also to see how he, uh, you know, dramatically reorganised the events. Uh, central events like the murder of Billy Bragg, uh, Billy Bats, sorry, Billy Bragg. <laughs> uh, the murder of Billy Bats is um, completely reconfigured uh, and you can, you can see why. Um, so highly recommend Wise Guy. It's a blast. I, what I can't recommend uh, is a subsequent book called Gangsters and Goodfellas, also uh, written in collaboration with Henry Hill. Once he had uh, come out, he'd broken out of witness protection and he was he was sort of living it up as a uh, pseudo celebrity mobster. This isn't written with Pileggi. It's written with someone else called Gus Russo. Russo makes a uh, valiant but feeble attempt to convince us that this isn't just Henry Hill sounding off, that he has been a responsible editor, wanted Hill to answer some tough questions. Uh, nothing that subsequently happens in the book would support that. It is from start to finish a advertisement for the writing abilities of Nicholas Pileggi, and a sad reminder that uh, there is a difference between having a good story and being able to tell one. Uh, Pileggi, by the evidence of this subsequent book, clearly heavily edited Henry Hill. He does have a rather cutting remark in his introduction to Wise Guy. He says something like, um, Hill spoke coherently and fairly grammatically for a mobster. But he didn't just tidy up his grammar. Pileggi also realised that Hill was, in his phrase, um, like a sidewalk mechanic in this world. He, he knew a little bit of something about everything. He had access to every level. He was a great observer and he, he clearly retained a lot of information. He also was a permanent outsider with, um, with a, an Irish father. He was never quite in with the Sicilian crowd, which is a major sort of plot point or theme in Goodfellas. Um, and this intimate outsider status, where he gets to see everything, but he's still sort of kept at arm's length, uh, places him perfectly to be a narrator. But he is just a narrator. He isn't really the protagonist of Goodfellas. He doesn't really make a great deal happen. Thinking about how Pileggi had handled Hill versus how Gus Russo handles or just doesn't bother handling Henry Hill reminded me of something Carl Rollison said, the uh, the biographer. I can't remember if this is in Carl's podcast. Excuse the 
over familiar first name. I have just interviewed Carl for the second time. And I can't remember if he said this uh, to, uh, in one of our interviews or somewhere on his podcast because I've been listening to it recently. But he said it in relation to talking to subjects of biographies who start to, uh, you know, insist that really, you know, they're the ones who know the subject. It's my, it's my story after all. To which Carl's rebuttal was, you may have the complete internal account. You can look at yourself in the mirror um, but as an as an outsider, as a biographer, I can walk around the outside. I can see you from every external angle, and that's true of Pileggi with Hill. He, uh, he he clearly got the measure of Henry Hill. And towards the end of the book, it's Pileggi that observes that uh, for Henry, giving up the life was hard, but giving up his friends was easy. That's the kind of insight that um, takes an outside observer, I think. Um, and there's absolutely none of that in Gangsters and Goodfellas. It is basically. Uh, Henry Hill's answer to Alan Partridge's bouncing back, how I bounced back. You thought the events of Goodfellas were exciting, you should hear what happened next. It is the difference between coaxing a good story out of the local drunk who had a colourful youth and just handing that drunk a microphone and saying, what's on your mind, pal? <laughs> Let rip. Um, it reminded me in all the worst ways of a rock and roll memoir. There are lines in it that are straight out of rock and roll cliche. To this day, the 90s remain a blur. That sort of bullshit. Just incredibly um, tiresome and and kind of sad. It reminded me of a review, and I hope I get the details on this right, uh, that Will Self wrote about Joe Simpson's second book. Joe Simpson uh, was the mountaineer who wrote Touching the Void, which was the true story of how he fell down a mountain in the Andes and despite overwhelming odds, managed to, uh, to kind of crawl to safety, um, despite you know being caught in the snow and just being absolutely doomed by anyone's reckoning. And then he wrote a series of books after that, including a sort of bouncing back, you know, I got back into mountaineering. And I remember, my memory of this is quite foggy, but I think Will Self reviewed that follow-up book and um, having really enjoyed Touching the Void, found this one somewhat disappointing and came to the rather uh, lamentable conclusion that, that Joe Simpson was better at falling down mountains than climbing up them. Very cruel, um, but true in this case. Henry Hill is much better at disintegrating um, than he is at supposedly bouncing back. Um, so I, I wouldn't recommend it at all. The one interesting part of it, which is for me a, a huge part of the appeal in these, these mobsters, is their obsession with their self-image, their obsession with how they are represented in popular culture. It's a story told through the the sort of uh, the canonical mobster movies and, and media, uh, the Godfather movies, Goodfellas, and then the Sopranos. They, they're constantly looking back on the ones that have come before. They're constantly modelling themselves based on how they've been represented in film. In fact, Nicholas Pileggi says in the forward to Wise Guy that by the time he met Henry Hill, he was utterly sick of running into hoodlums who were doing, you know, second rate impressions of of the godfather that's all really interesting and the the benefit of the gus russo book gangsters to goodfellas or gangsters and goodfellas is that by the time that was written goodfellas has come out and so henry we we do hear henry hill's reflection on his own um on-screen avatar we see him react to you know other people laying a claim to his story adapting his story and it ends rather interestingly with Henry Hill in Hollywood selling scripts, apparently becoming a hotshot movie producer, although I, I wonder how much, um, as with everything Henry Hill says, how much to uh, to believe him in terms of his great success. But it is, it's rather funny because it, it, it kind of mimics the plot of Get Shorty, in which a, a mobster moves to Hollywood and, and on the strength of his personal charisma, but also his, his sort of mob stories, uh, manages to become a movie producer. Interesting as that is, it comes late on in the book, and I wouldn't say it's enough to recommend it. It is a rather pitiable, um, hyper-sentimental drunkard's ramble. And I'm going to leave it there before this turns into a ramble too. So to conclude uh, in the question of, is the book better than the film? Of course, Goodfellas wins, but Wise Guy is terrific. If you're wanting a book that continues the atmosphere of Goodfellas, um, it's one of those adaptations where the the, the spirit is very similar in both. Um, so if you're a fan of Goodfellas, it's a no-brainer. You should definitely check it out. Don't bother with uh, Gangsters to Goodfellas. 
Um, if you want to see a little bit of late era Henry Hill, which is pitiable but quite funny, um, look up some of his interviews on YouTube. Um, he appears on the Howard Stern Show and it all kicks off 